we've got management turnover over at PayPal. And that might be good news considering over the last five years, the stock is up just 6%. We'll talk about that and more on today's show. What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are doing well out there. Time to pick up the story of PayPal holding sticker symbol PYPL. Like I said, over the last five years, stock's gone nowhere. Over the last year, it's down 35%, but year to date, picking up a little bit of that as it's up about 6%. This is all on the heels of reporting their Q4 earnings yesterday as the company reported about $7.4 billion worth of revenue. That was 6.9% growth year over year. It did beat expectations on that as well. We also got Q1 guidance. We'll talk about that in a moment. We'll take a look at the forward earnings estimates over at PayPal. Now we're going to have a change at the C-suite and other executives even leaving this company. And in some ways, I actually think that's probably a good good sign for shareholders over at PayPal considering the performance of the stock over the last five years or so. We've got competition nipping at this company's heels. We'll discuss that and then we'll obviously talk about the financials. We'll get into the balance sheet, the profit and loss statement, and the cash flows. And then we got to look at this from a technical perspective. Something should just jump right off the board on you from this, from a technical perspective. So we'll talk about that. Let's start with these Q4 revenues, which came in at $7.4 billion. Again, up about 7% year over year. Expectations were just slightly lower than that. More importantly, we got Q1 revenue guidance. Foreign exchange kind of neutral. It's going to grow about 9% to about $6.97 billion. Wall Street was expecting a number closer to about seven billion dollars in these days that's uh, close enough that would be about 7.8 percent growth year over year fx neutral i guess it's closer to nine percent and you see that's really the growth rate that wall street kind of has pegged on this company uh, essentially for the rest of the year about in that seven to nine percent range going out into the future can this company execute on that can it reaccelerate that? Because that is what's going to reaccelerate this stock price. As again, this stock really has not done a whole lot over the last five years. And it's largely because it just has not been able to reaccelerate these revenues after the gigantic bump that it got and a lot of stocks got during the shutdowns. Now, we have a change at the C-suite, and I actually think this is a good move. I have not been super impressed by this guy. And I know anytime I criticize a CEO here on the channel, people kind of flip out in the comments. And if you're watching, you, you can watch whatever YouTube channel that you want, certainly from financial advice and certainly from a financial entertainment perspective. But guys, this is like, watching sports and being frustrated with your quarterback with your running back with your point guard some of these guys actually are not doing a good job and yeah over his tenure over at paypal yes they've increased the revenue tremendously they've increased the number of active accounts but you know what also has increased this dude's bank account on top of that, you really haven't grown the share price over the last five years. I believe this guy has been there for about eight years. So for the past five years, the stock has literally done nothing other than got kind of a stimulus-fueled bump that he just really simply hasn't parlayed into a lot of other things for PayPal. Now, we've got other management turnover over at PayPal as well as Netflix hired away their chief accountant for the same role over at that company. Anytime you're doing kind of a lateral move, it's showing you that maybe there is some room for improvement over at PayPal and the old guard isn't up to the job. So if you're a holder of PayPal stock, I actually would be excited about these types of things. Now, it obviously brings a lot of uncertainty. Who's going to be the next CEO? What kind of job are they going to be able to do? We'll certainly find that out as they find a replacement for this gentleman. Now, the new CEO is going to have to deal with a lot of competition. You've got Apple Pay Later coming in sometime this year as Apple has plenty of money and they have the backing, I believe, of Goldman Sachs kind of partnering them with on that bank side of things. And so we'll see if Apple is able to push into that. You also have pretty much every large consumer bank behind a product known as Zelle and they're looking to create a digital wallet to also compete with PayPal and Apple and others. Now, the company is responding, and that is PayPal. They are going to lay off about 2,000 employees in another round of cost cuts, pretty much seeing this across to all technology as they had to overhire during the boom times of the pandemic, and now they're having to right-size their business. Speaking of the business, come over here to the balance sheet. Year over year, relatively flat on that cash side. Other than that, on the balance sheet, what I tend to look at with PayPal is kind of this fun 
funds, receivables, and customer accounts. If this number is flat, it's showing you that, you know, look, customers are leaving their funds in PayPal about the same. If you see large growth here, it actually would show you that there's probably an acceleration of that. You also can come down to the liability side. Here's your funds payable and amount due to the customers. So you recognize the customer funds on the asset side. You offset it on the liability side, and it's actually ticked up just a little bit. And so there is some activity there. If you started to see these numbers significantly decline, that in my opinion would be a sign that the competition is starting to eat PayPal's lunch. We are not seeing evidence of that, certainly from a revenue side as we get down to that is not showing that as well. Come down to the revenue side over at PayPal, $6.9 billion last year in terms of revenue on a quarterly basis. This year, closer to about $7.4 billion. Unfortunately, across the board, you're seeing essentially the revenue growth being offset for the most part by those total operating expenses. The transaction expenses continue to grow. Your transaction for credit losses didn't grow as much as I thought. It went from 350 up to 388. So they've done a nice job. I see for the full year, they went from a billion up to a billion five. So that's like 50% growth rate on those credit losses. Again, this company will set aside money just in case people more or less roll on their credit account over at PayPal. And so maybe they kind of front run that and they didn't have to set aside as much money in the most recent quarter across the board we're seeing some increases here what i did notice though was sales and marketing actually ticked down and so when you are able to tick up your revenue and not have to tick up your sales and marketing in locks up to that, that's actually a really good sign. And so that is why manage, the new management that is gonna be ushered in over at this company, and trust me, a new CEO is gonna come in and they're probably going to clean house a, a little bit more. They're going to reorganize, they're gonna to wanna to put their fingerprint on this type of thing, unless the board just decides to hire somebody that is gonna be a yes man. Some exciting times could be coming for PayPal. And so that should be exciting for anybody that is a stuck with this stock for the long haul. Overall, your total operating expenses went from about 5.9 billion up to about 6.1. That allowed you to tick up your operating income from about 1.1 billion up to about $1.3 billion. You pay the government and you come down here to a net income and you went from 800 million up to 921 in the quarter for the full year though, paints a little bit different story as the operating expenses kind of chewed up operating income, which actually went down year over year on the full year side from 4.3 down to 3.8. It looks like you had to pay a little bit more in income taxes. So your net income for the full year went from 4.2 down to, we'll call that 2.4. So your earnings per share lower year over year, but it looks like they're starting to right size that in the quarter. So it looks like a new CEO will pick up, I would guess by the back half of this year, and they've got some good things to work with, uh, quite frankly, with PayPal. I know I've criticized a little bit, but this is a good business. If you get somebody in there to be able to innovate, maybe create some new products and some excitement around some things, well, this is a company that has very solid financials, obviously, from an operating and a net income perspective, and they've got plenty of cash on the balance sheet as well. From a cash flow perspective, looks essentially flat year over year. You pull down the net income number, which is up marginally year over year on a quarterly basis. You do all your add backs and subtractions, what what I noticed about this company is they did keep stock-based compensation essentially in line year over year. We're not seeing this with all companies. It's continuing to accelerate with some of the tech companies that we're looking at. You went from 318 down to 294 for the full year, essentially a, a very similar story from 1.4 billion down to $1.3 billion. So considering the stock underperformance, Considering the kind of flattish growth that this company had, I do respect that the management did kind of pump the brakes on that stock-based compensation. That got you pretty much flattish from a cash flow perspective on a quarterly basis. It's almost flat from a rounding perspective. When you stretch it out to the full year, it's literally flat, okay? And luckily for this company, they don't have a lot to do with this cash flow. So the positive cash flow, they're able to kind of pour back into the balance sheet, pour back into the business. They do do a lot of reinvestment. I don't see a lot of other stuff going on in this company. They obviously don't have to do a lot of CapEx or anything like that. So it'll be interesting to see what the new management decides to do. Do they decide to build out products organically? This is a company that can continue to do acquisitions if the regulators would allow them to do that. There's some exciting stuff here. There, These financials, I'd be excited if I was a CEO that was hired on at this company and I was given a little bit of free reign to take some chances 
Well, there's some opportunities here. You have positive cash flow, positive balance sheet. Everything looks pretty positive. Now, what doesn't look super positive is obviously the stock chart, which again, over the last five years is essentially flat. I mean, we're basically at the same point we were. Now, yeah, you could have taken profit and had some massive gains during the pandemic, but I would guess, uh, you know, most of those people were probably few and far between. But what I am seeing is we're making a succession here of lower highs, but there is a clear floor at the stock. We'll call it right about $70. And it is clear because it goes all the way back to like 2017, 2018. Buyers step in right about $70. So we're not far from that. We're at about $79 and some change on this stock. It is at a turning point. Can it get over and above? I, I made a brown line because the brown line, the brown trend line here is the line in the sand, so to speak. You've got to bust out over over and above that really get above I would say about $90 per share on this one that would basically confirm that the line in the sand it might not be over you really actually probably have to get over $100 get through these highs here from a technical perspective that would show you that the buyers might have taken over and the sellers on this stock have kind of dried up to a certain degree if you get rejected at this line in the sand which from a technical perspective we're actually expecting this stock the stock is like right here right on the top of this channel we're we're expecting this to get rejected and probably retest down here at 70. I tell you what, if you're excited about new management, if you're not overly concerned about competition, which I wouldn't necessarily be over at PayPal, especially if they hire the right person, that would be your opportunity to buy about seven to $8 lower. I would have a stop loss somewhere underneath that because who knows where you go if you break 70 on PayPal because there is like nothing underneath this. I mean, you could come all the way down to the 30s, okay? Not necessarily anticipating that happening. Certainly there are some scenarios where that could potentially happen, but I would protect myself. Anytime I buy at like the bottom of the range like this, I always have a little bit of protection in there. PayPal, interesting spot. Very interesting company considering they're going to have management turnover and they've got a balance sheet and cash flows to support somebody that comes in and makes some changes because changes are needed over the last five years. The stock has basically gone nowhere. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll be back again later today for the Fang Stock Recap Show. Good luck with your investments.